Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I am super excited because I'm sitting here in front of components and that means we're doing a PC build video. It's been a long time since we've done one of these on the channel just because of the PC hardware shortage. Hasn't made a lot of sense to be going and recommending people build full PCs from scratch, especially when buying things like GPUs have been hard to come by. But we are starting a new series on the channel. Should be a couple of videos where we're gonna be building some budget systems. This one is gonna be an Intel system. We've got the 12400F right here. We'll be back on the channel in about a week to cover an AMD system as well. But the idea with these builds is that both systems are gonna be very similar. We've gone and chosen some really good quality budget parts for things like storage, memory, case, power supply, all of that sort of thing. And then the only real difference between the two systems is gonna be the CPU and the motherboard with the, the end goal in part three to benchmark the two systems and really dial in what are the differences when you're building a budget system using an AMD RX 6600? What are the differences when you go Intel for the CPU? What are the differences when you go AMD with the CPU? And Steve will be handling that video on the channel in a couple of weeks. But I'm super keen to get building. It has been a long time. I'm really looking forward to this one. And we're just gonna go through the components in a moment and explain all of our choices. But before we do that, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI and their CH130 Repel Tech Fabric Gaming Chair. I've recently got my hands on the H130 for Matt's live stream build. It was meant to be Matt's new gaming chair, but my daughter snapped it up pretty quickly and Matt was just too kind to take it away from her. She really loves it. I'm not sure if it's the super easy to clean patented MSI Repel Tech Fabric with advanced multifunctional layering properties that repel and protect against water or maybe it's the hardened full steel frame that ensures durability and reliability, or it's probably the exceptional comfort with ergonomic contours designed to conform to the natural curvature of your body and spine. Whatever it is though, she loves it, and I reckon you will too. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. For the CPU, we've chosen the Core i5-12400F for this Intel build. This is a really great all-rounder for budget builds, providing decent productivity performance and a really solid gaming experience from its 6-core, 12-thread P-Core layout. In our testing, it's very competitive with AMD's Ryzen 5 Zen 3 processors, but comes in at a much more affordable price point, currently selling for just $185 US. And whether you run it with or without power limits, for gaming, it's less than 10% behind the Core i5-12600K, which costs around $100 more. Being an F model, it does lack integrated graphics, which is a non-issue for this build, as we're providing a discrete GPU, and choosing to grab an F SKU typically saves you a few dollars for the same CPU performance. We're expecting this Core i5 CPU to last quite a while for modern gaming. It really is a very powerful CPU, especially relative to higher end parts from just a few years ago. The motherboard we're slotting the 12400F into is the MSI Pro B660M-A Wi-Fi, which in our opinion is the best value B660 motherboard you can buy at the moment. In Steve's recent Best B660 Motherboards video, he talked about how well equipped this particular model is for the price, featuring plenty of USB, PCIe, and M.2 connectivity. It also has a very capable VRM with decent heatsink coverage. It's able to cope with even a Core i9-12900K if you want to upgrade in the future without sacrificing the full performance potential of that CPU. And of course, it therefore runs excellently with locked parts like the 12400F. At just $140 for the standard model, or $150 US for the version we've chosen with built-in Wi-Fi, it's a great buy for today's budget systems. There are cheaper boards on the market, but below this sort of price in the B660 range, you often run into VRM issues, which limit your upgrade potential, so that's why we've gone with something a bit better quality at still a great price. For memory, this is relatively straightforward. DDR4 currently provides the best value for money with Intel 12th gen processors, as DDR5 doesn't usually bring a significant performance advantage, at least relative to the cost of buying the much more expensive DDR5 DIMMs you'll need, as well as a higher end DDR5 capable motherboard. Also the MSI motherboard we're using is a DDR4 board. When it comes to capacity and frequency, 16GB makes the most sense for today's games, and a 2x8GB kit ensures you get dual channel performance. Of course, with this MSO motherboard, you can upgrade to 32GB easily in the future if you want to. Then for memory speeds, the sweet spot today appears to be DDR4-3600, which is often the same price as DDR4-3200 or slower configurations. So you may as well get 3600 speeds as the Core i5-12400 can easily handle it. 
For this build, we're using G-Skill Ripjaws V series memory, which is very reliable. We've used this stuff many times in the past. It's affordable and widely available. Of course, we would recommend you check what's available at your local retailer for the lowest price, but at $65 US for the kit we're using, it's right among the best value choices. The GPU is always a contentious topic these days, especially with current GPU prices. However, the choice we've gone with for this budget build we feel delivers among the best value in the market today, and that's the AMD Radeon RX 6600, which you can currently buy on Newegg for as little as $370 US, which is only $40 over this GPU's $330 MSRP. Usually there's a few options for the RX 6600 available. We're using the MSI mech variant today, which is one of the most affordable AIB models and a great value choice. But as always, you should check what's available in your region for the optimal deal. Why the RX 6600? Well, for a GPU in the $400 range, it's the best on the market at the moment. This GPU is very suited to 1080p gaming and is also a decent budget choice for 1440p as well. It's around 25% faster than Nvidia's nearest competitor in terms of price, the GeForce RTX 3050, and it stacks up favorably compared to the more expensive RTX 3060 as well. This is especially true in these budget categories where ray tracing isn't very impressive on either card, and I think getting 25% more performance in games is enough to mitigate the loss of DLSS. For storage, there are heaps of options you can go with here, and really this is going to depend mostly on the capacity you need. But for this build, we've opted for Team Group's Cardia Zero Z440 in a 1TB capacity. This is a really great quality PCIe 4.0 SSD using TLC memory and with a DRAM cache, important for optimal performance as a boot and gaming drive. Rated speeds are up to 5GB per second read and 4.4GB per second write for sequential performance, and the M.2 form factor is ideal for the mother board we're using. This particular drive will set you back $125 at the moment, which is a good price for a PCI 4.0 drive. At this stage, we have a slight preference for PCI 4.0 SSDs as a boot drive, given the additional speed for loading apps and so on, but games themselves won't benefit much at the moment, so you could also go PCI 3.0 if you want to save a bit of cash. A 1TB PCI 3.0 drive typically sets you back $80 to $90, so a relatively small difference, and like I said, plenty of other options available if the Z440 doesn't take your fancy, including a very extensive range from the same brand team group. For the power supply, this is not an area you generally want to skimp on, otherwise you might accidentally buy an exploding one. So for this, we are grabbing something from a known brand in Corsair with a good track record, good efficiency certification, and quality components. It's the Corsair RM750X, which is highly recommended in the famous PSU tier list, 80 plus gold efficiency, modular design for easy cable management, and 750 watts is really plenty for this system, overkill even, but will provide a lot of scope for upgrades in the future if you want to chuck in much more powerful CPUs or GPUs. The RM750X currently goes for around $120 US, which is pretty standard for a high quality PSU, but there are other choices if you want to go more down a budget line. The MSI MPG A750GF is another 750 watt 80 plus gold option for $100, and of course lower capacity models are available too, although you don't often save that much dropping to 650 watts or lower in the same product series. 750 watts is a great sweet spot for value and also upgrade paths in the future. Next up is the case, and once again, lots of options here for buyers depending on the sort of style and features you want. But for a budget build, I probably wouldn't recommend spending more than $100, which is what we've done with the Fantex Eclipse P300A we're using for this build. Going on the Gamers Nexus philosophy of airflow, this case has a metal mesh design on the front to bring in plenty of air to cool the components, and we got the special RGB model, which comes pre-installed with two front fans to enhance our B-roll. The normal model has just one rear fan, so for optimal airflow, adding in a front fan yourself, or grabbing the RGB model with three pre-installed fans is the way to go. Aside from cooling, this is a really neat compact case. We've got all the usual modern case features like a tempered glass side panel, PSU shroud, a couple of 2.5 inch drive bays on the rear of the motherboard, and a couple of front loading hard drive trays. Decent cable management options too. It's just $70 for the standard model, which seems to be a good sweet spot for today's budget friendly cases. Although of course, lots of options here that compete with this, so do your research. Final note here is just on CPU cooling. The Core i5-12400F includes in 
Intel's RM1 box cooler, which is an adequate option for entry-level PC builders that don't want to spend a cent more. For this build, we are going to benchmark it against a similar AMD system we'll be putting together next week, and for that we want to equalize the cooling, so we're opting for an aftermarket cooler from Be Quiet. The model we wanted for this build, the Pure Rock 2, was out of stock when we went to get it, and seems to be a good option for just $40 US, but what we ended up with instead was the Dark Rock Slim, which is a bit of overkill here at $65 US, so I'd probably try to get the Pure Rock 2 instead where possible, or just use the box cooler or a cheaper aftermarket cooler. But again, the point here is to compare this with the same cooler for our AMD build, so that's what we'll be using here too. And if you do end up getting some of these Be Quiet coolers with your LGA 1700 motherboard and CPU, make sure to pick up the LGA 1700 mounting kit, which isn't included. The total cost for this build came to $1,120 US, with pricing current as of this video, but of course we have links to all the parts below if you want to see current pricing, which will be handy Andy if you found this video after it was published. Most of the parts here have been optimized to strike that balance between value, longevity, and upgrade pathways, which I think is super important for a budget mid-range build, as you might want to improve it as you go. You might be able to save maybe $100 by optimizing areas like the cooler, SSD, and power supply, but overall, I think this is a good mix. So with all the parts explained and explored, let's head now to the build process. All right, first step, pretty straightforward. We're gonna put the CPU into the CPU socket. And because this is an LGA 1700 motherboard, uh, this little plastic cover that we've got here is just gonna come off during the process. So if you've been familiar with Intel builds in the past, very simple process. So yeah, let's get started. So we're just gonna align the little tiny little golden uh, indicator that they provide in the bottom there with the bottom of the CPU socket like this. And then, and just pull the clip down, this comes off, it's in. All right, for this particular build, I'm gonna do the SSD slot next, put the SSD in because, because we're using a towel cooler, I feel it might just restrict this area a little bit, so we'll do that first. So very simple process. All right, so on this particular board, we've got the standoff pre-installed, which is awesome. So that's going to simplify the process a lot. And the screw that's on the heat shield that we've got here is just going to slot right into there as well. So because we are using a PCIe 4.0 SSD, it is very important to make sure you take off the little plastic cover there, um, just so that we get good contact onto the SSD, which may get a little toasty during usage. Chuck that over the top. Um, with this particular CPU cooler, you just need to install the specific LGA 1700 mounting kit, as you can see here, uh, which is required for this particular cooler with these motherboards. Doesn't come in the box, it is a, is a separate thing, which we found out the hard way. And it's a pretty straightforward system with the LGA 1700 boards, just need the back plate on, and then we move over to the top side and finish the installation process. So with this particular CPU cooler, there's no pre-installed thermal paste on the actual cooler, but you do get this little tube so you can do it yourself. And that's pretty much what we'll be using here. Of course, you can purchase your own separate thermal paste, which may be of higher quality than this, but for a budget build, not worth spending five bucks when it comes in the uh, cooler box. With the Core i5-1200F being a sort of longer CPU design, I tend to go with a line on the LJ1700 CPUs. So, just chuck that in like this. Maybe do a few dots around the place if there's any left over. Bit messy in the end there, but I think that will be fine. Cooler block going on without the fan installed, which makes it a bit easy for us in the installation. So we've already removed the uh, protective film on this one, so very easy to go in. And then from there, we just need to slot in this little bar which is gonna connect us between the CPU block and the mounting hardware that we already installed last time. Fan installation next comes separately. Just have to attach it like this. It tends to like having the cable put towards the bottom, so I'll just put it in like this. Just making sure that these plastic things connect to the rubber 
on the side so we don't get any vibrations. Then just insert these like this. So on these MSO motherboards, they've got a really handy dim indicator, which tells you if you've only got two sticks, which uh, dim slots to populate first. So we're going to be putting dim A2, dim B2 in first. So those are these two slots here. Let's just chuck them in. Got to make sure you install the IO shield before putting the motherboard in. It can be an annoying process, but nice and in. As we're using a micro ATX motherboard, we need to install a couple of extra standoffs into the case, one here and one down there. Motherboard going in, standoffs are in, and we're in, time to screw the board in. All right, motherboard is in and ready to go. Next up, I tend to like to put the GPU in. You can put the power supply in now if you want to, but we're gonna be putting the GPU in. And for that, we just need to prepare this area of the case where the uh, little brackets are that we need to remove. So let's get to it. All right, GPU's going in. And we'll just add the screws in. All right, power supply, we've got most of the way in. Bit of a tight fit with the RM750X in this case, but it does get in there. And we'll just screw it in. All right, main components are in. Obviously, we've got a few cables to deal with, so let's get to some cable management. All right, so I've got all the cable management done at this point. All the headers are connected, power's in there, and then around the back, you know, it's looking all nice and neat now. So I think I've done a good job of that. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if the system posts the first time. We've already put the door on, so I'm pretty optimistic. Oh, I've got to turn the power supply on. That'll help. So, as you can see, it's fully working and we're now in the BIOS of the MSI motherboard. Um, not too many things that you need to change here. First up, if you are getting to this screen, then you're pretty much all systems go. And of course, because this B660 series has come out at the same time as the 12th gen processors, you pretty much won't need a BIOS update to run the particular 12400F CPU that we're using. But of course, always check the motherboard manufacturer website because BIOS updates can help things, of course. But there is one key setting that we do need to change in the BIOS first up, and that is, of course, the XMP profile. So as you can see up the top here, our DDR speed is set to 2133 on DDR4. Pretty slow, but the XMP profile down here says DDR4 3600. So it's just a simple one-click button Let's turn on XMP and exit, and we'll say yes. Let's restart, and we're pretty much good to go. All right, and that does it for our Intel budget system build that we've done here, posted the first time, which is always a good sign, means we built it properly from the get-go, which is always good to see. As we talked about at the start of this video, Steve will be benchmarking this system in an upcoming video, and in the future, we will also be building a very similar AMD build. Obviously this build, we use the Core i5-12400F on a B660 motherboard. Uh, we also will be doing a Ryzen build, which will be using the Ryzen 5 5600, coming up soon on the channel with most of the same parts. So both of those systems will be benchmarked in a video that Steve's working on, uh, so you'll be able to check out exactly how this system performs and our AMD system in an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that, should be very exciting to see how that goes. If you are interested in any of the parts we've been talking about in this video, obviously we've recommended a few things for budget system builders. We do have links to those in the description below. Pricing does change regularly, so it's always worth checking out what's the best deals for you in your region. And aside from that, well, if you're interested in supporting our channel and the hardware testing that we do, the research that we do for these build videos and all those sorts of things, please do consider our Patreon and Floatplan accounts. Links to those are in the description below. Uh, you'll get access to things like our Discord community, which has been really fun to chat with some of you guys in there. We've got monthly live streams, behind the scenes content, all sorts of great stuff. So thanks for watching this one and I'll catch you in the next one.